Good afternoon, everyone. Let's talk about film noir. Um, I wanted to say something before we start talking about this. I really like that you're using films from previous units to talk about what we're talking about. A lot of people sort of brought Scarface in and brought Blade Runner in. That was really good, and I'd like you to keep doing that. Um, because this is a five-week class, it's an intensive class. I didn't want to do discussions of both the readings and the films. But the problem with that is that we don't get to discuss the films as a group. Um, and so bringing the films into the discussion, that would be a really fun way of sort of inserting it in, in, in our general discussions. All right. Um, awesome work. I just wanted to talk about two things, uh, sort of reiterate a few things that you said about that notion of the femme fatale, um, and also to talk a little bit about Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft. Um, because I want, I want you to sort of be aware of how those two terms uh, work in sociology and cultural studies and in urban studies. Let's talk about the femme fatale first. Um, I love how you worked with her. It was really interesting. Some of you knew the term, some of you didn't. So that was really fun to have a combination of people who were knowledgeable about this and people who were new to this. And you were trying to sort of figure out how, how this sort of character works in film. So that was, that was really awesome. Um, and so think of these women are as strong independent women that are placed in sort of mid-century American films. As, as um, Krodnik describes them, they are a willful rejection of domestication. So they're not women that are simply happy with being the wife and the mother um, and being the submissive passive figure but sort of saying, I want to do something else. I want to be something else. I want to be somewhere else. I love how many of you talked about, I want to be in the city and do the things that men do in the city. Um, so that's, that was a really interesting conversation in there. Um, but don't forget that they're used. They're used and abused in these movies. So yes, we see the portrayal of these strong independent women, but they are in there in order for the male protagonist to have a plot. Um, and so at the end, there are two, there are two solutions for women in these films, especially with femme fatales. They either need to be killed or gotten rid of in some way, or they need to be domesticated. They marry, they marry off. Um, now that doesn't mean that we have a historical moment in here where, as you call them, badass women are on film. Um, and that's, that's something that we really can't forget. Yes, they have a bad end. Yes, they're seen as bad characters. But at the same time, this is one of the moments in which we see that sort of power enacted on film. Um, in some of your papers on Scarface from the unit before, you talk about Cheska as a femme fatale. And I, I thought that was really interesting. She's not the traditional one she is in the sense that um, she is breaking out of the mold of femininity and womanhood in the 1930s in the U.S. And that makes her quite unique. And that makes her close to the idea of the femme fatale. Of course, she dies at the end, too. So that narrative is sort of part of that as well. So awesome work with that. Uh, Gemeinschaft. Gesellschaft. I don't know German, so I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I think I am. Um, these terms were created at the end of the 19th century, so they're slightly outmoded terms. I think some of you very accurately talk about things that are a little more complex now. And so I don't want you to think as Gemeinschaft only happens in the countryside, only happens in small towns, and Gesellschaft only happens in the city. I think they both happen in both places. It's just that there is a tendency towards Gesellschaft in the city, and there's a tendency to Gemeinschaft in the countryside. But the idea of person-to-person, face-to-face relationships that have nothing to do with calculated maneuverings about work and money and power, those exist in the city. They really do. Um, and so don't think of them as absolute. Don't think of them as two separate things. Think of them as two tendencies. One predominates in the city, the other one predominates outside of cities, um, but they're not, there's not an abyss between them. These, these happen 
in tandem with each other. So keep that in mind. Next paper. Um, I'm tightening the screws just a little bit. Um, we've done three papers so far, and I have been a little lenient about how you put the papers together, how you argue things and all of that. Look at my comments. Um, I have been pretty thorough about all of the things that you're doing. Um, most of the papers are awesome. I'm, I'm being thrilled to read them. Uh, but just be aware that I'm going to be a little stricter about how you put the paper together, starting from response paper number four on. And so now you know what I'm looking for. Now you know what I'm expecting. Now you know the kinds of papers that I'm, that I'm hoping to get. Um, if you have any questions about this, by all means, send me an email um, and I can give you some details. That, that would be absolutely fine with me. Um, we haven't done this in this class, but if you feel like you would like me to see a draft before you hand it in, send it to me. Send it to me. I'm, I'm checking emails every day. Um, and so use me. You pay three thousand dollars for this class. Exploit me. Um, so if you want to send me a draft, I would be happy to look at that. All right. Hope all is well. Bye.